Do you have old footage that you love or has sentimental value or is from a place that you may never go again, but doesn't quite live up to the quality that you shoot today? Just recently, I've been seeing quite a few advertisements, as you probably have as well, for a program called Topaz AI. And what Topaz AI purports to do is to take your footage and resurrect it from the dead. Take some low quality standard definition footage, up res it to 4K or 8K, and give that footage new life. And this was really important for me personally because I have tons of footage from the early days of my filming on my Canon 60D that I love. And so the promise that I can relive that footage in a updated way is very enticing. So today I'm going to dig through some old footage, find some of my favorite clips from more than a decade ago and put it through Topaz AI to see if Topaz really can resurrect your footage and give it new life in 2023. So first, Topaz Labs. It's using AI to basically read your footage and read photos and then fill in missing details. There have been a lot of programs that have done this type of stuff before. Uh, I remember when I was first getting started, there was a program called Twixter that would do ultra slow motion with your footage by basically guessing the footage that was supposed to go in between, guessing the frames, right? So if you uh, put in a 30 frames per second clip and you wanted it at 120 frames per second, it would basically just kind of guess you know, what was in between those frames that you did capture and add in more frames. And it was to varying results. Sometimes it worked pretty well, sometimes it didn't. And so Topaz AI is, is something similar where it's basically trying to use an algorithm to figure out what are the missing details of your footage, adding them in in order uh, to, to make a sharper and more detailed image. I bought Topaz AI for $249 on their pre-sale promotion. And so we are going to check out and see if it'll work. First up are these clips I pulled in from my trip to Everest Base Camp. These were all shot by my buddy Gaston because obviously I'm in them. You know, as you can see, we were, we were beginners. We're using cameras that had maybe uh, four stops at dynamic range, <laughs> maybe seven. Um, so we blew a lot of highlights. We crushed a lot of shadows. And the second clip I wanted to see if I can improve is this fly fishing in a blizzard, which we filmed for humanity in Iceland. The resulting short film was eventually licensed by CNN's Great Big Story. It's some of my favorite footage just because the experience of shooting it was so much fun. And just being out in the elements is one of the reasons I started shooting documentaries in the first place was that I just love the, the aspect of being out in the elements shooting adventure, shooting sports, uh, and being caught in basically a blizzard while we're fly fishing. So we got a few different types of clips as well. So I wanted to test Topaz on a few different things. And then I also pulled in some clips from this film we did on a artist in Iceland who lived out on a farm, was a really kooky character, really fun guy. Uh, so we filmed him farming for the early morning and then took us to his uh, art studio and showed us his hundreds of portraits of dogs. Here he says, uh, reggae music, dog, and then maybe too much reggae music. And then finally, because it had so much great detail in it, I included this shot of uh, the Wailing Wall, and I'm gonna export all of this out as just match source ProRes 422. Is there any way to make this clip less nerdy? All right, so we will just go ahead and hide Premiere for a little bit. And now here we are in Topaz AI. So when you start Topaz, there's not much going on here, really. It just asks you to go ahead and import some footage. Two shots here, uh, the Wailing Wall, and then all the collection of the other images. I'm gonna look at the presets. You can do four times slow motion, eight times slow motion, which would love to test some of those out. But for me, you know, this is about resurrecting old footage. And so I'm going to go ahead and upscale this. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go big. Um, so they have different parameters that you can do, different enhancements. And for this one specifically, I think the highest, ah, no, here it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 8K. Let's go for it. You might as well go all out. Since I have a uh, ProRes file, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing ProRes. I'll just do standard, audio mode, doesn't matter, just whatever it is. And so we're gonna get an 8K ProRes file. And while we're in it, let's go ahead and add some recover detail up to 30, see if that can just help a little bit more. So this whole clip is about a minute and 47 seconds long. It might take Topaz a few moments to, to work. Uh, and so we will go ahead and take a little break. Do 
you put it in the oven, but no longer is useful. We are back. That took about an hour exactly, one hour and one minute. So now we're gonna head back into Premiere and drop this footage in and see how it looks. Here's our two finished ones. They end in Prob 3. Not really sure why, but they do. So that's them. And we'll drop that in here. Boop. So here's our first one. We'll just go ahead and drag and drop this over the top of our original. All right, so we have our 8K footage. Ooh, already you can tell it's much larger uh, than our normal footage, which means we can down res it to what? 25%, that makes sense. All right, let's see how Topaz did. So I'm gonna try to make this as big as possible. I will definitely export this out uh, and make sure that we can see it on full resolution exported out, but let's just kind of go through it and see what we can see. So that's the Topaz AI file. And in comparison, here's the original. And it's hard to tell on this screen. I feel like when we do a side by side, it'll be a lot more apparent. But initially, this one doesn't seem to have received a lot of upgrades. This one, on the other hand, already you can see quite a bit more detail, just more pop over in this area, especially along, I mean, right now we're kind of focused on this chain link right here. And you can definitely see that sharpened up pretty considerably in the topaz. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get to the fly fishing stuff because I think the fly fishing stuff will be a little bit more of a test for Topaz. So this is the 8K. Oof, wow, that looks really good actually. You can see sort of his jacket, his face, everything looks more detailed and yet somehow a little smoother um, in 8K and the Topaz stuff, so that's pretty cool. So here we have you know an interview with one of the fly fishermen. And the original looks pretty good still. You know, I could still use this today. Um, the light's pretty flat, so there's not a lot of dynamic range in the shot already. And so the cameras handle it pretty well. Um, but let's just see if with Topaz. Wow, yeah, I mean, you can see just the, the beard scruff, uh, the snowflakes on his jacket, just how much sort of more detailed and sharp that is compared to the HDs. And while the HD version still looks pretty good, there's definitely, you can definitely see a pretty big improvement on the Topaz. And there too, on the interviews, just his eyes are popping more, his beard is more detailed. It's really nice, actually. I'm actually quite impressed. And then finally, let's take a look at the Wailing Wall. Uh, so this is the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And I think this might be actually one of the shots that probably best represent what Topaz can do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the normal one first and I'll just go ahead and put the 8K right after it so it'll go right into it. So here you can see we're lacking quite a bit of detail in the rocks and the bricks of the walls of the buildings themselves. And then as we switch over to Topaz, wow, that looks amazing. So this shot by far seems to have the biggest upgrade from using Topaz AI. I mean this looks like uh, actual true 4K or 8K image as if it was captured natively with those resolutions. And that is actually really impressive. All right, so just scrubbing through it right there, I was pretty impressed. I'm gonna spend the next few minutes of this video just playing through some of the side-by-side -side comparisons. And, and that I think will help you sort of figure out is Topaz AI something that you'd want to use uh, for your own work and for your own past footage and hopefully resurrect that footage and bring it back from the dead and give it a new life um, in 2023 and beyond.
they don't bite. <laughs> they don't bite you, don't worry. So that's a pretty exciting test so far. I think on human faces, on static shots, landscape shots, as we saw with uh, the wall in Jerusalem, it does enhance things that have a lot of complex detail in them already and enhances them even more. Where it struggled a little bit more, I mean, some of the shots from the Ever Space Camp trek, uh, I didn't see a huge improvement. That could be sort of user error originally, right? Some of the shots were a little soft from focusing anyway. The dynamic range on those cameras were not great. Um, and, you know, we had some blown highlights and some crushed shadows. So no amount of up is going to be able to fix those types of problems. But for shots that are already pretty well exposed or are of a human face, Topaz does a really good job. And as someone who shot some of his favorite material in the first two years of his career in terms of locations and types of shots and people and, and adventures that I had, you know, this is something that I could definitely see myself using quite a bit in the near future. I think there are also some pretty other big use cases where the footage is interlaced or it's old GoPro footage or old phone footage or handycam footage. So what do you think is uh, Topaz AI something you're gonna be using in your own videos? Is there old footage from your past that you love that you would love to see sort of resurrected and brought back from the dead using a program like Topaz AI. Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.